This is John Black, super chemist. I'm here to show you how to get uh, concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, here's a couple before I get into how to get it. It's basically just at the hardware store. Um, I wrote a couple. I'm trying to do a little bit better on my how to get videos, maybe give you a little bit of information. Here's the molecule of sulfuric acid. Here's the formula. Concentrated as it can get is 98%. All right. Uh, some people call it oil or vitriol. Um, here's the some to call it properties. Uh, boiling point, freezing point, or some people call it the melting point. I looked this up on Wikipedia here. And let me tell you, I have a hard time believing this freezes at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to have to try that. Uh, slowly decomposes at 300 degrees C. Um, these are how many milliliters and grams are in a mole. Um, now, what I always do is if it's 98%, I divide that by 0.98, and uh, I think it comes out to 56 milliliters for a mole. Um, I'm not sure if I'm right on that, or maybe someone can comment and tell me what the deal is. Is it really 53, or should I divide? Because it's, really, it's only 98% is whatever, so I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, you can get it two ways, drain cleaner and battery acid battery acid I, i'm sure there's impurities in there uh, but let me tell you that stuff looks clear as water i mean it, it is beautiful uh, but i think it's only like 30 percent you'd have to titrate it to find out uh, the drain cleaner you can get that at lowe's walmart's wherever i'll get mine at lowe's um, i want you to look at this pka though pka basically tells you how acidic something is uh, the lower the pKa, like if I have something mixed up with sulfuric acid and it has a higher pKa, I know it's a base and this is the acid because it's the lower pKa. Uh, if the if I put something in there that has a pKa of minus 10, then this will be the base, and the minus 10 will be the uh, acid and protonate this. Um, but anyways. Uh, look at the difference here. This is a, a strong base is considered anything like minus two or below. This has a minus three on this first uh, hydrogen because this is diprotic, right? Two hydrogens. The second hydrogen has a pKa of, it's not even in the negatives. It's a two almost. You might as well say a two, 1.99. That is not, I mean, I'm not saying it's a weak acid, but it definitely is not a strong acid. It's a medium, medium acid. Once you take that off and it becomes a bisulfate, bisulfate uh, that bisulfate is, is only a medium acid. It is not strong at all. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and another thing is, is when I started out, I had a hard trouble when it got the, why does this H come off? You know, I always think of a base, OH. Well, why doesn't an OH? Well, that's, there's no, well, the whole deal is, is because of the resonance of these double bonds. You basically deprotonate, you can resonate that back and forth, put your double bond over here and put your, uh, your uh, negative up here and then go back and forth and that delocalizes the electron density across this whole whole th you know what I mean uh, that's a lot of stabilization the more stable an anion is the more acidic it is and that's the whole deal why anyways to get to the finale here this is the stuff let's see here I don't know if you can see that it's basically drain drain opener you know it's good stuff because it has a bag. It comes with a bag on it, right? When you get the bottle, it'll have a bag in case there's a leak, and that way the bag will catch it. But look at what it says on there. Professional strength, fast-acting sulfuric acid. Keep in mind, this is, uh, you know, this isn't 98%. This is probably like 96 uh, down to 92 percent, you know, I would count it as 94, 95, 96 percent, but it's not 98. Keep that in mind, and I get it from Lowe's, uh, but I'm sure you can get it from Walmart or any any hardware store. Just look, make sure it says sulfuric acid on it, and make sure it's in a bag, you know, a bottle that's inside a bag. And look how it says virgin acid. I don't know if you can get that in there. 
I'll just read it. It says virgin sulfuric acid with inhibitors. So there are inhibitors. If you pour this out, it's like looks like cool. It's clear, but it looks like a pink Kool Aid. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, there's a couple things you can do. You can either just what I do is I put it in a distillation apparatus. I don't know how Nerd Rage does it, where he distills under all that pressure. Every time I try it, my joints come undone, and there's sulfuric acid leaking all over the place. Uh, so basically, I just do it till that point, right? I distill some of the water out, and the action of heating, boiling sulfuric acid, that will kill anything in there. Everything in there will be turned into carbon dioxide and water. So uh, you can do it that way. Another way is to add hydrogen peroxide to this. Keep in mind, when you add sulfuric acid and uh, hydrogen peroxide together, you're making piranha solution, which is an acid. Uh, if you add that wrong to a different ratio than what you should, it will blow up. Keep in mind, I know the rule of thumb is you pour uh, acid into stuff. You don't pour stuff into acid. But when it comes to peroxides, the rule is reversed. Peroxides trump acid. If you're going to mix acid and peroxides together, you always, mix, you always pour the peroxide into the acid. If you do it the other way around, then you're, like I said, you'll blow up with the wrong concentration. And if you pour the acid into the... Uh, peroxide, you're going to have more peroxide, like 99% peroxide and 1% uh, acid, and you're going to end up blowing yourself up. So always remember that. Peroxides go into acids. Acids go into other stuff. So if you don't know what you're doing, I suggest you do not mix sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide together. And if you do, you find out the correct ratios that you need. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? You can just boil sulfuric acid and it'll it'll do the same basic thing as the as the hydrogen peroxide did. The heat alone will do it. You know what I mean? You don't need to put that in there. Um, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And that'll boil itself. You don't even have to add heat. Uh but and then you boil it and uh you know, you can make it nice and clear or whatever. You still have some stuff in there, but it's, it's a lot better. You know what I mean? Um, the only way you can truly make it pure is to distill it. And uh, I would do that under a vacuum. And I'm actually going to do a video where I distill sulfuric acid, but I'm going to do it under a vacuum. I'm gonna, that's one of the things I'm going to make in one of my videos coming up is an aspirator, which is basically a... Uh, basically a, a vacuum makes a vacuum and uh, you can put it right in in series with your uh, your water pump that you're using on your water condenser your water cooled condenser and that way you don't have to put it on your like your spigot on your sink and you you know keep losing water down the, down the drain you can recycle it and you can make it colder the colder the water is the more the better the vacuum is uh, but anyways so I will be doing that showing that uh, sooner or later and then there's always the method you can just put the sulfuric acid in a beaker you can just boil it until it reaches the boiling point of sulfuric acid which is like 333 or 7 degrees or something like that you have to look at the beginning of the video uh, but if you do that then you have pretty pure stuff I mean you got rid of all the water and it's pretty concentrated and all the products have been broken down or hopefully distilled. I mean, you pretty much have pure stuff. Now, there's a bunch of ways to make sulfuric acid. Uh, these are the two main ways. SO3, you put into water, and you can see the SO3 gets an oxygen, becomes an SO4. Or you can do SO2, and then you have an extra oxygen over here. You have one less oxygen here, so it still becomes sulfuric acid. The thing about this, though, is unless you have 100% H2O2, as soon as your SO2 reacts with all the HO2, H2O2, then it'll start reacting with the water. So if you only have 3 or 10% H2O2, that's you're making sulfurous acid. Uh, eventually, over time, I'm guessing that it does turn into sulfuric acid um, just by, you know, you can probably just bubble some oxygen through it. 
you know, or let it sit there with its lid open or whatever. Uh, but anyways, it's it uh, easily converts to sulfuric acid, I'm guessing. Uh, but um, this way right here, if you do do this, if you try it, uh, keep in mind that uh, if you put su uh, su sulfur trioxide into water, it's a violent uh, exothermic type thing. And it will react and, you know, it'll get out of control. Uh, the way they do it is you, you, you already have um, concentrated um, sulfuric acid, right? And you bubble the SO3 into that, okay? And then you'll make oleum, right? And then all you have to do is dilute that with water to make it concentrated sulfuric acid again. Um, that way, when you bubble it in, it's not violent like it is with this, okay? Um, so keep that in mind, and also about alpha explosion. You know, I wanted to bring this up because, you know, I don't really bring up, uh, I don't know, safety features, I guess, a lot. Um, but I brought up the SO3. I thought I should bring this up just in case. It's called alpha explosion, uh, heating a crystal of alpha self, uh, Sulfur trioxide to its melting point results in a sudden increase in vapor pressure, enough to shatter the glass containing uh, containing the SO3 being heated, um, which is what is known as alpha explosion. Um, so, I mean, if you're doing stuff like this, you got to be start out simple. You know, this is on you to figure out the safety stuff. Um, I'm just making videos showing how I do it. Um, so keep that in mind. A lot of things can explode that you don't even realize. Try to bear with me and uh, give me some time. And in a couple months here, I'll be back to making videos. So I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, always remember, science is great. Deprotonate both of them. Now you're you're across that whole thing. You know what I'm saying?